Good afternoon. Welcome here from Bob Copeland Field. You can see right there the sun is shining. It's not quite as uh, crazy wind-wise as it was yesterday. Val joins me here, and we're going to do a little talking sports here live from Rochester High School here this afternoon as we get set to go with the uh, Rochester Zebra's second home game of the season. They're going to be taking on the Eagles from Culver Academy here about 5 p.m. So coming off of a uh, nice win last night, they uh, defeated Pioneer 5-0 to get their uh, third win of the season, 3-0, and coming into tonight's contest. Right. Somebody's going to get set for their first loss tonight. Rochester's 3-0. and Culver Academy is 2-0. and um, Zebra's just doing it with pitching. Uh, they've allowed five runs in three games total. And two of the the two runs they allowed against Plymouth in the first inning on, uh, was it uh, Tuesday, th those were unearned runs in the first inning, you mm -hmm. know. So, I mean, the, the the pitching has just been outstanding. Yesterday, you know, nine walks, but they kept getting those big outs with, with when, when Pioneer, you know, when they were, Pioneer seem, was seemingly one hit away from getting back in the game the whole game. But they just couldn't do it. Rochester always got those big outs, whether it was uh, Braden Zink or Luke Hunting or, or Tanner Reinert, who made a very imp impressive pitching yeah, oh, yeah. Debut, varsity pitching debut yesterday in the seventh inning. Yeah, he did uh, really well there to close things out. And Tanner's also doing some things with the bat. He's 7 for 10 so far in the season. Yeah. Well, I could have told you, and you, you know as well as I do, uh, how good of a baseball player he is. We saw how mm -hmm. good he was on the on the basketball floor. He's just a really good athlete as a freshman. Um, but if you if you watched him a few years yeah. ago down in the uh, you know the the little leagues in the town and country league, you you wouldn't be surprised because mm -hmm. he's he's that good. And what was interesting is that he has not played a whole lot of third base in the past. Mm -hmm. but he turned a very you know that that five three double play that he turned yesterday was one of the big plays of the game. Yeah, I I was on the ladder trying to stay on the ladder last night running the camera, so I I don't uh, recall exactly, but. I don't think uh, did did Pioneer even get a runner to third base? They did not. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was I was thinking that they hadn't. I know they had a first and second a couple times, but I didn't think they had anybody at third base. And uh, you know, just just some great defense. And you know, Coach Good, uh, we were kind of wondering where the pitching would come from, but he's he's sitting here. He's like, you know, I've got seven kids that I could pitch at any one time that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's a that's a great luxury to have, especially when you know that uh, really none of those uh, guys are seniors. Right, yeah, and that's that's the other thing. It's kind of, you know, it's it's that junior class now, and they've, they've been playing varsity for a year or two, and it's kind of, I guess we say this about juniors in almost every sport, but it, now it's their time to step up, and they've really <laughs> stepped up so far. But, yeah, this team, I mean, we think, I mean, we think about last year's team. This team is younger than last year's team, and we, we need to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, and you you look back too because you know we're only two years removed from not having any spring sports. Mm -hmm. So you know these kids missed their entire. Am I doing my math right? Freshman year, yeah, the yeah. juniors. Mm -hmm. So really, they've they've only gotten that one year of experience, but you know they've played together like you said so much that mm -hmm. it's just it shows really well. And so the academy coming in tonight, you you talk about um, you know their always a kind of an unknown but they always seem to have somebody uh or a couple somebodies and right they I'll, put up 31 the other night against culver so yeah and i'm actually intrigued by their pitching mm -hmm. uh they've got a kid named oscar stewart who's a very very good pitcher and they've got another kid named deontay obertine so we'll see how they do last year they went 14 and 7 uh they lost to hanover central in the sectional semifinals in the class 3a sectional and that was the same Hanover Central team that wound up making it all the way to the state championship game and losing. Mm -hmm. And that was, I mean, that was a loaded Hanover Central team that started six seniors. So this uh, Culver Academy, this is another tough opponent. I mean, you look at Rochester's, the, I mean, they played, you know, four really tough opponents so far when you talk about Delphi, Plymouth, Pioneer, and now Culver Academy. Yeah. And they'll have two more tough opponents before they start sectional play, or excuse me, two more tough opponents before they start conference play. They're at Caston on Saturday, and then they travel to a very good Northwestern team on Monday night. Yeah. The girls are going to be taking on Culver Community tonight. So both uh, both teams taking on a Culver team. Just this one is the academy. The girls taking on a community. Um, talk a little bit about where the uh, the softball team is. You know, we were there the other night, mm -hmm. uh, Winnemac, 10 Rundum. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, how the girls are doing. 
Yeah, um, you know, Coach Becky Lee talked to her kids after the game about, um, you know, ha- about dealing with a loss and dealing with your mistakes and then correcting it and moving forward. She goes, you know, we're, we're going to go undefeated this season. So now it's kind of how, how do we react to this loss and how do we come back and, 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 and move forward from there. Um, you know, she was – Becky Lee was pretty happy with the offense. I mean, she felt like, you know, we had competitive at-bats. We, we, you know, we weren't striking out a lot. We were putting the ball in play. Um, you know, she the, the, the pitching was an issue, especially just the control. Uh, she t- she said that Mia Hadeshell had a minor injury. Uh, Becky didn't speculate. Coach Lee didn't speculate on what the injury was but or didn't specify uh, the nature of the injury but just said, you know, she'll, she'll get over it and she'll be back and, and she'll be uh, – ready to go. So I imagine she'll be in the circle tonight against Culver. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things with uh, the Rochester Zebras softball team. Their pitching is, is really young. You got Mia Hadeshell, who's a freshman. Dara Strasser also has pitched some. Mm-hmm. She's a freshman. And then uh, Emma Sells, just a sophomore. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're they're going to have those games where they struggle a little bit from yeah, the Yeah, I mean, you know, my, my, I mean, you really miss what Maya Musselman gave to this team. And, you know, she graduated. And so I know they, somebody's going to have to step up. But I think offensively, I think you know everybody's pretty happy with what they've been getting. And then, again, you've got the Maddie Heinzman kind of trump card, mm-hmm. where at the very least she's going to help you out defensively, and she's also a pretty helpful bat. And that's to go with Emma Hadashell, Callie Watson, Kylie Coleman, Sydney Hawes, and, who are always going to give you good at bats. And then you've got Keaton Doran and, and Strasser with their speed at the bottom of the lineup. And, and you got like, a you got a Culver team coming in. They they got. Um, you know they got beat pretty well by Plymouth the other night, eighteen to six, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're going to be coming in, kind of, uh, you know, trying to right the ship a little bit. Um, AJ Hines is, you know, going to be in the circle, I would imagine. But uh, this is a Culver team that, you know, this is a kind of the second year for Coach Moyes and the second year for a lot of these girls in the program. Um, you know, they've got some good players. Caitlin Conshots had a really good year. Uh, Abby Casella is a really nice player. Uh, Lucy Obermeyer, I know we've talked about her in the past. Um, yeah, Marissa Milam. Uh, this is a, a team with some veteran players, so I'll, I, you know I'll be curious to see how they bounce back. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Plymouth, Plymouth hit them with seven runs in the first inning, kind of the same thing that Winnipeg did against Rochester, and mm-hmm. they were kind of on their heels from there in that game. Wound up losing eighteen to six in five innings. So that one's going to start at four thirty over at Fansler. I'm going to take a camera over and record that while we're here live tonight. So. Uh, we'll be able to go back and, and do that in post and get you that. Uh, hopefully everything goes well. We'll get that game for you sometime early next week. So good luck to the to the Lady Zebras. Track had a had a meet last night. I know I saw they they didn't do high jump or pole vault last night. They I did I, not I, do a high jump or pole vault. That'd be a little scary as, as windy as it was. I was, you know, like I said, on that ladder, I was a little uh, – Leaning into the wind a few times there, it, it was pretty gusty. I bet they were uh, looking at 40, 45 mile an hour wind gusts last night. Right, and, and I talked with Coach Ryan Helt quickly, and he said, "Don't take these ti- even even the times on the track. Don't take them too seriously because you're running in one direction, you're running into a severe headwind, and then you're you make the turn, and all of a sudden you've got a big tailwind at your back. So it's just kind of hard to look at those times. But again, they, you know, the the the, the Boys were able to bounce back and get a nice win uh, after they lo- they had lost to Manchester on Tuesday night. It was a three-way meet with Manchester and Wabash on Tuesday. The girls won it. The boys were second behind Manchester but ahead of Wabash. So mm-hmm. nice to bounce back uh, and, and get that win. I think, you know, uh, you know Manchester is really strong in the sprints and the hurdles, and I think that's where they, they got a lot of – where Manchester picked up a lot of points in that meet. They've got a kid named Dom Lincoln. I mean, he's you know he ran a 39.2 in the 300 hurdles. Again, I know hand timing, but still 39.2 in the 300 hurdles. Yeah, that means you're in the state discussion. That's yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's impressive. Yeah, that's that's. And again, he he won. I mean, he was the defending TRC and sectional champ, I believe. So, yeah, he's there. Yeah, Manchester's tough, and they've got the, the the Cummins kid who's a really good sprinter. So, I think it was a nice challenge for the Rochester boys sprinters. I know Rochester's. You know, they've got a lot more depth in that sprinting, and it's good to be tested like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the girls' tennis finally got on the courts the other night and picked up a, a nice win, a oh, very was, young yeah. team, and they, they got a win 3-2 against LaVille. Yeah, they, they were down 2-1, to one, and there were two matches left on the court. 
one singles and two singles. So obviously Rochester needed to win both of them. And incredibly, both of them went to third set tie breaks. <laughs> Six all in the third set, and he needed a tie break to to win the match. I mean, in high school tennis, we see maybe two third set tie breaks in a year. We saw two third set tie breaks going on at the same time. We're kind of bouncing our back and forth to see who's going to win. Ella McCarter won at two singles. That got it to two all. So it all came down at one singles to Kylie Houston, and she was able to pull out 8-6 in the tie break. Because remember, it's first to seven, but you got to win by two points. So she won the tie break eight points to six. Mm-hmm. And uh, she, you know, I, I asked her, I said, Kylie, is that the most stressful you've ever, most stress you've ever felt in a sporting event? And she goes, no, I've been to volleyball regionals, and I've, I've experienced that stress before. Once it got to six all, I just said, okay, I just need two more points, and then I can get out of here. And she did, and she... You know, it, it, Kylie's just, you know, she's so smart and so mature that she knows how to handle those situations. Mm-hmm. And she did a great job. I mean, you know, she her, her older sister used to be the number one singles player at Rochester, and she's kind of following that tradition. Of course, Ella McCarter's older sister used to play tennis, too. Right. And her older brother. And her older brother, and her too. Father, and her father. And her dad. Yeah, yeah. They're the, the tennis playing McCarter's. And... But what a story Ella would get to tell about her first ever varsity match that right. she won in a third set tie break. Right in a match, her team won three to two. You know, and and she's a, a freshman playing number two singles. Yeah, I mean that's impressive in itself. Yeah, and a shout out to Lilith Eaton who won at three singles. She, her match wasn't stressful at all. It was six love, six love. Yeah, but uh, all the kids are in new positions. Um, you know, Lilith had never played singles before. Kylie was a doubles player mostly. Ella's a freshman. You know, the one doubles team is Emily Hughes and Riley Holloway. They never played varsity tennis before. I'm, I don't think they ever played competitive tennis before this year. Wow! And yeah. then, uh, yeah. So, but I, I asked, I asked Jesse Atkinson. I, I said, "How does this team rank in terms of athleticism?" And he goes, "Yeah, we're we're really athletic." Right. I right. I mean, I, I think this team would even compare. You know, with when you look at his sectional teams with with Zoe Bixler and Allie Bickle and Abby McCarter, I mean, this team might be more athletic than right. that team right now are they can they translate that into success in the tennis court right because we know all those girls we know all those girls right. from different sports right not necessarily from tennis so right. they we know they're athletic and a lot of them you know are really good basketball players and and uh, volleyball players right. and where, where tennis isn't their primary sport right. but they're kind of figuring it out right trying to figure right. it out and you know i, I talked with emily ackerman from valley uh last week and it's kind of they're kind of in the same situation mm-hmm. And I think it really goes back to the pandemic again, because in a lot of ways in tennis, it's kind of year to year. Mm-hmm. You get kids to come out for a sport. Maybe they've never played tennis before. Maybe they never held a racket. Oh, I like this sport. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I'll come back and play next year. Mm-hmm. But when the when the, the pandemic happens, you're kind of really starting over from scratch. Right, right. Especially I, at, at smaller schools like Rochester and Valley. Yeah, and we've talked about it before, too, with tennis. Uh, there's not a, a huge group of kids in our area that that is going to be their first sport right i mean it's it's a second sport for a lot and it's a third sport for some too so. right and, and and the sacrifices you have to make in tennis are beyond even most sports i mean i remember talking with zoe zoe bixler and ali bickle back in the day i mean they, they would travel to warsaw to the indoor courts in warsaw right. during the winter to get some some matches in mm-hmm. to get ready for the spring i mean that i mean they were really really dedicated and you really have to be to well, those top players. Yeah, and you, you can't rely on being able to get out on the outdoor courts. You know, you look at the way it is this spring. I mean, this mm-hmm. is the first match that they were able to play, and, you know, we're already into mid-April. So, yeah. you know, you can't rely on the weather to be helpful, and, yeah. and you don't want to be picking up a racket for the first time when the weather does get good. Yeah, yeah. So now they've got – I think Peru, they've got Peru coming up next week. Peru's ranked in the top 30 in the state, so mm-hmm. that will be a big challenge. Right. And they've also got another TRC match against Whitco next week. Yeah, we've talked about Peru a lot with their tennis program on the yeah. both, both sides, boys mm-hmm. and girls. They mm-hmm. they just seem to have a mm-hmm. – they have maybe more uh, down there uh, than than anybody with those are tennis first players. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the golf? Have, have we gotten any golf going yet? I know the uh, big tournament last weekend was canceled. I don't think yeah. – Rochester and Valley both had their season opener last night against um, Culver Academy at the Academy course, the nine-hole uh-huh. course they have over there. Uh, I know that Culver Academy won. I know that Rochester finished second. I know that Valley finished third, but I don't have final scores yet, so I'm working on them. But I'll have that on the blog as soon as I get them. But 
Yeah, that I was, imagine that was pretty interesting with the win. Oh yeah, that <laughs> you probably had to think two or three times about what club you were picking out of your bag <laughs> right. before. I mean, once that win, it probably even affects your putts. Right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think. You know, there's obviously different directions for every hole going, but uh, you know, that's that's kind of a, a undulating course with a lot of hills, and and uh, you know the the greens aren't real big. But um, you know, for a for a little six or a nine hole course, uh, they do you know they keep it well maintained. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, but there's a lot of trees on the sides, and you, you want to try and stay you know pretty tight in those fairways. Yeah, they, they've actually refurbished that course at the academy mm -hmm. fa fairly recently within the last couple of years. It's really mm -hmm. nice now. Yeah, yeah. They you know before it used to be they kind of would mow it like you would mow your uh, you know baseball diamond or whatever you know every once in a while, but now they're got it more yeah. groomed and uh they re redid the clubhouse rebuilt the clubhouse and yeah it's it's pretty nice yeah now again i don't have individual scores or team scores so we're we'll, we'll we'll have it on the blog as soon as we get it but obviously culver academy they're a powerhouse program and them playing again there's is there something as such as home home course advantage in boys golf absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely there is and mm -hmm. and i would imagine that you know they're, they're they have a very strong team again yeah yeah, so uh, it's a big tournament coming up on Saturday, the Don Dickon Classic, and that's at Stonehenge in uh, Winona Lake. And okay. the Zebras will be there for that one. Okay. So what else is going on around Rochester th this week? Nothing, nothing too crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, there's just a few games here, or there for spring sports, and then nothing else really, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy, the coaching carousel seems to m move fast. Um, you know, Joel Burris is going to be the new girls basketball coach at Rochester. Uh, we found that out on uh, earlier in the week, and uh, we put that on uh, Twitter yesterday. It's gotten a lot of gotten a lot of social media response. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Joel, I think is pretty well known around the area. Uh, he lives in town or in the area. Um, you know, his wife Ashley is a Rochester grad. His brother-in-law Austin was starter on that 2009 Rochester boys team that made it to the state finals. Uh, so even though Joel's not from Rochester originally. He knows this area very well. And, of course, he used to be the girls' coach at Caston, so he knows Fulton County very well. Right. So it'll be, you know, again, the Trinity Greenlawn boys, they were number one in the state in defensive scoring average. They allowed 29 points a game. And remember the, remember the year before he became the coach, Trinity Greenlawn allowed 62 points a game. His first year as coach, it was 38. Then down, yeah. to, then down to 36. Then down to 35. And this year down to 29 in their first year as, a, as an IHSA program. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a program too. I mean against some legit teams, uh, you know what I've Culver I think scored like 15 against them. Mm -hmm. uh, Argus they held to under 30 I think if I remember right. 34, 34, 22 yeah. was the final. Yeah, and yeah, so if if you translate that numbers wise into a, a girls program, if he can, boy, you you could probably see some some games, you know, 25 points, uh, you know, or less mm -hmm. uh, defensively that Rochester might be holding an opponent. Right. It, I mean, it's a 2-3 zone that I I when I think of the when I think of the I call it the Burris family defense, but it's it's a 2-3 zone, but you, they just don't sit back in a zone and just stand there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a very active zone. Yeah. And I'll be curious to see uh, how they how they wind up operating it, but you know Joel Burris is a guy. He he's he's kind of a coach's coach. I mean he, he he's kind of he's always kind of obviously his dad is a great coach, but he's he's a guy who will watch I think a lot of different coaches and try to get whatever he can from different coaches, whether it be college or high school or boys or girls. Yeah, and you, you think about it, I I think with the group of again, seniors again, from from what I know from what I know of Joel, I, I've known I've known Joel since he was in high school. I've known him for fifteen years. Yeah. With that group of seniors they got coming back next year, uh, you know, it just seems like this uh, defensive philosophy is going to fit really well with them. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they're going to be navigating the 3A level uh, again. They haven't been in 3A for a few years, so that's going to be a challenge as well moving up. Yeah, that, that came out this week. It seems, right. like that, it seems like that was like a month ago, but so much has happened this week. Yeah, Rochester's going to be 3A for girls basketball, 2A for boys basketball and volleyball. But yeah, the, there's you know so now you can put together you know who will Rochester be in a sectional with, and it seemingly can go a lot of different ways. Will they be in a sectional with Peru and Maconaqua? Will they be in a sectional with Valley and Northwood and Fairfield? Will they be in a sectional with some of the South Bend area teams like John Glenn and and those those teams? The good news is they will not be in a sectional with South Bend Washington, 
They're in 4A. Right. <laughs> they, they moved up to 4A due to the success factor. Nor will they have to face them, you know, in the regional or any other round. Yeah. So, yeah, that's curious. I, I know we've talked quite extensively about, you know, the different possibilities. And, mm-hmm. and really, you could go about one of every direction. I mean, you could go, you know, this way, this way, this way, or this way, and and probably, you know, logically see them being in, in any one of those yeah, sections. So that's the nature of the geographic area where we are at. Right. We're basically stuck right in the middle of the state. Yeah, the northern half of the state. So you, you think about where, where they might end up. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting. And then you got some other teams that have moved, uh, you know, different Will, will they be in a section with Culver Academy and Knox? That's another possibility. Right, right. That's uh, that's intriguing too, right? Because mm-hmm. so. Culver Academy, they had a good year last year. They won their sectional. They lose Taylor Bow in a graduation, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of team they have. Yeah, and just like we talked about but with Coach, the baseball team, it's, Co- Coach Murchie, he's he did a great job there, and he's yeah. he's well known and yeah. in kind of the travel ball circles, he's really well known and well respected. Yeah, yeah, I'd be they, curious if they, if, they, if they wind up with their, you know, yeah. uh, McConaughey, No Lily Maple, uh, Peru, uh, new Co- I think Coach Weeks has uh, stepped down, but mm-hmm. new coach coming, so it could be could go in a lot of different directions, a lot of different scenarios. Yeah. And uh, it won't be too long before we find out about the uh, first part of May, right? Tuesday, May 3rd, I think is when we expected, or either May 2nd or May 3rd. May yeah. 3rd at the latest, we should, we should find out about all these yeah. sexuals. You know, the boys, you know, um, it's it's interesting because uh, Rensselaer, who won Rochester sectional, they're going up to 3A. and now But now you've got Pioneer and North Miami. They're moving up from 1A to 2A. Right. So could Rochester be in a sectional with those teams? Yeah, and that's the thing. You know, we talk about the, the girls in 3A. Well, the boys, they're staying in 2A. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the football team is staying in 2A. There might be some some shakeup in that 2A sectional uh, for the football team as well because, you know, there's a lot of teams that are uh, moving, uh, you know, up. Right. Bremen has moved up, right, to 3A. Right. All eight teams in Rochester's football sectional are staying in 2A. Bremen is also staying in 2A. They're staying in 2A. For right. F- okay. But uh, Winnemac is coming in right. to 2A. So where will they put Winnemac? Right. Will they put Winnemac in Pioneer and Rochester ske- uh, sectional? If so, then somebody will have to move out. Mm-hmm. Could it be L- Rochester? I guess we're hoping Laville would be the one that would right, move out. Because right. Laville was the one who knocked him out of the sectional. But there's, yeah. no such, there's, no, there's no such thing as an easy football sectional if you – if you don't wind up in a sectional with Laville, maybe you wind up in a sectional with Andrean, or maybe you wind up in a sectional with Fort Wayne and Lures, or maybe you wind up in a sectional with Eastbrook. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so. again, because of Rochester geographic location, who knows where they might wind up. Right. So a lot of uh, a lot of questions, and, and hopefully first part of the month, next month we'll get some answers to those mm-hmm. questions. Mm-hmm. So um, is that uh, anything else Rochester-wise that you want to go over? Uh not now, yeah. I think uh, I think that's what we have for now. Um, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a, a very, very interesting, busy spring. I, I, I think uh, I, I really, I, there was so much, the tennis match the other night was just so much fun to watch. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, after this weekend, it's, you know, supposed to be a little chilly again yet this weekend. Hopefully after this weekend, we keep saying that, right? Hopefully we've after had, this weekend. Yeah, it just seems like we've had one chilly weekend after another. It just seems mm-hmm. like a, the temperature just, just, it's like the Mother Nature realizes it's Saturday and the temperature goes down to the 20 degrees. Right. When did it go up? Yeah, good, good point. <laughs> I'm still waiting for it to go. Good there, point. There yeah. was that one that one uh, day, uh, mm-hmm. what, about – 15th of uh march yeah that it was it was really nice out yeah and then i think the weekend and then monday and then it got cold and that's when we got snow and everything else going on and mm-hmm. so well let's take a quick break here we'll uh come back and and talk uh a little bit more here with uh with val on our friday edition of talking sports with val live from bob copeland field here at rochester high school Show off your school pride with help from the Winning Edge. From customizable sportswear to engraving awards, the Winning Edge has what you need to help your team stand out from the others and highlight the achievements of your athletes. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com.
Welcome back here to Bob Copeland Field as we are talking sports with Val and figured I'd run that winning edge ad as uh, Coach Good just dropped off the uh, lineup card here for tonight's game with the Culver Academy Eagles. And so I figured that was an appropriate <laughs> ad to run at that time. So we've talked to, you know, a little bit about what's going on in, in Rochester. Um, what's on your mind as far as other things that's going on around our area with our schools? You know, I wanted to give a shout-out to Joey Spin, not for baseball, but for basketball. Yeah. I, I ran this. I ran across a tweet, and I retweeted it. There were only 28 players in the state who made 40 or more three-pointers and shot 40% or better from three. Mm-hmm. Joey was one of those players, and I, that's just such an amazing thing because Joey really was never known as a three-point shooter. Yeah, wasn't this year about forty-eight? Wasn't that his percentage? I think uh, I it was look at close it. Yeah. to fifty. I mean, and yeah. he's he's not uh, you know like you said. I mean, he's he's made a good number of, of three pointers. Yeah, so it's not like he shot five and made you know shot five and made two or, or shot ten yeah. and made four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he hit a lot of clutch threes throughout the season. Yeah, uh, the only part for the only thing for casting that. You kind of frown at as you look at that list, and you see Joey's name, and then you see Hunter Pogue's name on that mm. list as well. And, and he was, I think, over fifty percent. Yeah, Hunter was just an awesome shooter, and his yeah. threes in that sectional semifinal game at Tri County was one of the big reasons why casting season came to an end. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that was uh, you know obviously a great uh, great game between two very senior laden teams. And, yeah, but. Uh, but on the on the baseball diamond, Casson's off to a two and one start, and Joey has he was our RTC Player of the Year last year, and he's off to a red hot start. Even in their one loss, which was to Wabash, eleven to four on Tuesday, Joey went four for four in that game. Um, he had a great performance on the mound in their win over Manchester. They won a really tight one, two to one, scored the game winning run in the bottom of the seventh to win that one, and then uh, so they beat Manchester, lose to Wabash, and then they come back and they beat North White eighteen to three. In five innings uh, on Thursday, that had to be a sweet win. That <laughs> cat, if you talk about who is Caston's arch rival in baseball, obviously Pioneer would be up there, but I think North White would be just maybe a notch below Pioneer, almost on that level. They, Caston and North White have had a lot of battles over the years, so for Caston to win that game, it's a good sign. Yeah, and like you said, uh, they're going to be hosting the Zebras coming up uh, tomorrow, right? Right. Varsity game starts at 11 a.m., and, the J- and then the JV game will follow at around 1 p.m. Okay. So, uh, yeah, hopefully the weather will hold out. I think it's supposed to be dry, just yeah. uh, not real warm. Dry, just chilly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the conference play for Caston starts next week, and that we've talked a lot about that Hoosier North Conference. It looks like it's going to be wide open again. I mean, we had a four-way tie last year, and Caston finished in fifth place just one game back. I think it's going to be really tight. Yeah, so what are your thoughts on uh, Hoosier North Conference baseball? It's uh, – you know, you, you look at a team like Pioneer, you look at a team like Caston, you got to think that they're going to be in the mix. I don't know what Triton is doing baseball-wise. But. Uh, Triton is, looks like they're going to struggle again. Okay. I mean, they were they were so they were so young last year. They were loaded with freshmen last year. This year, they're kind of loaded with sophomores. Triton had that game against Valley the other day. They lost 16 to nothing in five innings, and Cameron Manuel of Valley pitched a perfect game: 15 up, 15 down, 15 strikeouts. Hmm. Now, again, Cameron Manuel is a good – I mean, he's maybe even a step above some of the pitchers that Triton will see in the Hoosier North. But, again, the thing about the Hoosier North is you play 14 conference games. You play everybody twice. That means your pitching depth is really going to get tested. You're gonna, mm-hmm. your number, more likely than not, you're going to see the number two pitcher of every team. So how does your number two do in those games? Again, Caston, I think, is well-suited because they have both Joey Spin and Kate Zider. Um, you know, you look at that Laville, the team that's really interesting is Laville. You know, they were in that four-way tie for the title last year. They graduated a lot of kids, though. They've got six freshmen this year. Mm-hmm. But, boy, these six freshmen look like they're really good. You talk about a kid like uh, Zarnecki. We saw him in the basketball court. He's a good baseball player, too. They didn't, uh, they didn't do too bad on the football field as well. And, you know, I mean, Lucas Plummer, we've talked about him so much. Sure. I mean, he's only a – seems like he's been around forever. He's only a sophomore. Yeah. They've got a, we have got another young kid named Jaden Lawrence, who's a really good player. Mm-hmm. Uh, this you know, Laville, they're they're young, but they're talented, and they they could be up there. Uh, but then you, on the other hand, then you flip it. You got that Winnemac team; they've got nine seniors. Mm-hmm. And when you talk about kids like Hayden Clark and Caleb Seymour and Dustin Brown and Tyler Perry, uh, they've been through the battles. I mean, they and you know they they know what it's like to be in those clutch situations. And 
Uh, you know, Winnemac had a nice win over Oregon Davis last night, 13-1. to And, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, the, with Coach K and, and – you know, they, they know what to expect from him. I, I think it's a team that's well-suited for a good year. Uh, and then, but I think the team that, you know, and then, you know, North Judson's a team, I, I don't know a whole lot about North Judson, but they've ha- they certainly have a very good baseball tradition. They mm-hmm. certainly have a good great group of athletes there. And then uh, a team that could be kind of sneaky is Knox. I think they could, they could be. Uh, really? They could, okay. you know, they, they always have a couple of really good, you know, really good pitcher and can a couple of really good bats. Uh, mm-hmm. They could be a team that could sneak up on some people, I think. Okay. That should be interesting. Like you said, you know. And, the, and we should mention the team we saw here last night, Pioneer. Yeah. I mean, uh, but Braden Erickson, I know it wasn't the greatest outing for Braden, but, um, you know, again, graduation hit Pioneer hard, especially in some key areas on the diamond. Mm-hmm. Um, but, again, I, you know, it's a pa- they had a patient approach at the plate, just couldn't get that big hit with runners and with runners on base last night. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a team, again, when you look at the game that Caleb Sweet pitched against Delphi the other day, right. he had about two runs in the first inning and then shut him down the rest of the way. Um, you know, they're, t- they're two and three, but their three losses are to Tri-County, Delphi, and Rochester. Those are three pretty good teams. Right. Uh, Pioneers got a doubleheader coming up at West Central on Saturday. And, you know, if you, if you can win those two, then you can get some momentum going for when conference play starts. When they play Knox, it's two games set against Knox on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, Braden is going to be fine. He's not going to have, you know, too many outings like yeah. he did last night. And then I thought Brenton Gomer pitched well I, last yeah, night. Yeah, I was going to say, Gomer, Gomer pitched really well. And then, like you said, Caleb Sweet uh, the other night pitched a really good game against Delphi. So yeah. you got to feel like they're they're finding their two and three guys. Yeah, and you've got some veterans, you know, out there like Caden Couch and Owen Miller. And they'll, I think the, they'll be – They'll be good bats for them too. So yeah, yeah. And, and, Again, not quite the depth that they had last year, but I, I think a, a pretty good team uh, with a, or the potential to have a pretty good team. And and the conditions last night were just brutal. I mean, you know that wind was just crazy, and and you know you saw many times the the wind gusts would come up and and dust coming in off the in, you know infield and right. even even the umpire needed to time out to wipe the dust out of his yeah, eyes. Yeah, yeah, I mean it was affecting everybody. Yeah, so. You know, I, they'll be fine. Uh, I think, you, like you said, they'll be right up there in that mix. I think Cast and Pioneer, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a really fun season. Who's your Northwise? Yeah, we should give a shout-out for Cast and give a shout-out to Jackson Rentschler, mm-hmm. uh, who had, I think he had a three-run home run against uh, North White last night. Uh, again, not many left-handed power bats in our area, but Jackson's one of them. Mm-hmm. And then you've got even some, you know, kids like uh, Adam Rush, who maybe we don't maybe talk about uh, uh, the Holder Field kid. I mean, it's not just that we we t- I know we t- and we and of course Sam Smith. I mean, we we talk about the senior class or cast. We've known them so well for so long, but they've got some other kids who are kind of maybe you call them role players, but who are really helpful players. I think. Yeah. Uh, while you're talking casting, I guess let's uh, move over to the softball side of things over there. They kind of righted the ship after that loss to to Logan Sport and have been uh, what rolling. A, what a week they've had. I mean, to beat North Miami 14 to 10. Put 14 runs on the board against a really good pitcher in Lauren Duncan, mm-hmm. and then the next night, 12 to nothing in five innings over Culver. They scored nine in the first, and uh, just a dominant pitching performance by Addison Zimpleman. She pitched a no hitter with 11 strikeouts, and then uh, last night I think we talked a little bit in the, in the past about how Caston has beefed up their schedule. You know, they get a game with Twin Lakes, mm-hmm. and they travel to Twin Lakes and win 12 to two. Yeah, that is excellent. Uh, it seems like we we say these things over and over again. Addison Zimpleman and Isabel Scales both hit homers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Ma- Shock, Ma- shocker, right? And Mollenkoff was great in the, in the circle. She had nine strikeouts. So, yeah, I mean, this team just is rolling along offensively. Uh, looks like Coach Brooks has made a little bit of a defensive adjustment. He's moved uh, Macy Hinderleiter from shortstop to third base. He's put Mollenkoff at Mollenkoff or Zimpleman at shortstop when whoever's pitching or whoever's not pitching of the two okay. plays shortstop. And then McKenna Middleton has been moved from third base to second base. And it sounds like they're getting good results. And then, you know, they're just really solid at first base with Annie Harsh and really solid behind the plate with Isabel Scales. And, you know, they've got a really good athletic defensive outfield when you talk about Bailey Harness and Maddie Smith and uh, Alexa Finke. Yeah. So we got uh, a game with Caston. Hopefully, uh, if everything goes the way it's supposed to, we got a game with Caston next week on Friday. We'll be down there covering that game with McConaughey. Another new addition to the schedule, and yeah. that is a you know McConaughey. I know their coach really well, Billy Wood. Uh, his daughter Sammy is one of his assistant coaches. Uh, the Wood, 
I mean, he's coached a lot in the you know the Denver leagues down there and the youth mm-hmm. leagues, and now he's taken over a varsity program, and that team can hit. Mm-hmm. So that they, they will not be easy to to keep down. I'll, I'll be I'll be really curious. That could be there could be a lot of runs in that game. Yeah. Uh, talk about big softball games. There's another big one coming up on Monday over at Herc Hoffman Field. The uh, Winnemac yep. Warriors going to uh, Pioneer. Yeah, uh, Pioneer, nice win over Delphi last night, six to two. Uh, kind of broke through late. Um, you know, uh, you know, Haley Kripe didn't have her usual great game at the plate, but she had 18 strikeouts on the circle. Hmm. So that was. I, mean, I think she only went like. I think she only had a single uh, yeah. at the plate. But again. You, you look at their I mean, this is a team that's going to find ways to score runs, even if you can hold down Haley. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I saw Pioneer play Argus earlier this week. They are a great defensive team. They are a great base running team. They, yeah, they can hit the long ball, but they aren't totally dependent on that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, having said that, Mackenzie Robinson did hit a home run last night against Delphi. Um, I like their catcher, Casey Webb. She's only a sophomore, but she's got a really good arm. Uh, Shaley Goings is going to fill that role of number two pitcher. She really changes speeds well, throws strikes, lets her defense do the work. Uh, that's really what Coach Thomas has been kind of telling her, you know, mm-hmm. like let your defense do the work for right. you. We've, right. uh, Belle Blickenstaff is back. She's hitting cleanup. She's playing third base. Another Blickenstaff playing third base at right, Pioneer right. and doing a good job at it. Um, Addie Kripe, we saw her mostly in the outfield last year. When I saw her the other day, she was playing second base. Turned a nice double play with her sister, a 4-6-3 double play. Mm-hmm. Um, first base, Carly Morris, doing a nice job there. And then, uh, you know, Kylie Attinger playing left field from what I've seen, Kylie Ferris in center, and Mackenzie Robinson in right. That's That'll be a very good defensive outfield. Yeah. So you saw last week you saw Pioneer and Argus, and then, of course, we did the Winnemac-Rochester game. So talk about, you know, what what does Winnemac have to do uh, to beat Pioneer? Um they're going to have to make plays defensively. I mean, it's going to come down to defense, I think. They struggled. I mean, even though they beat Rochester the other day, they struggled a little bit on the defensive side. I think they had two or three errors in that game. And then, you know, Winnemac, they hosted Valley last night, and it, Valley comes into Winnemac and wins 12-4. to Very impressive performance. We'll talk about the Lady Vikings later. But uh, it's a Winnemac team that, uh, that they're, you know, with um, – Aubrey Gearhart having graduated, they're not going to get the volume of strikeouts that they've gotten in previous years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, it looks like that Ella Gearhart will be their number one pitcher, and maybe a, somebody like Alexa Sheets will fill in at the number two spot. We know Emma Goodman will do a good job at catcher. We know Kaya Campbell will do a good job at second base. Uh, we've got another, we talked about the two Blickenstaffs playing third base at Pioneer. We've got two Perrys playing third base at Winnemac. Katie Perry graduated. Her younger sister Sam is now playing third base this year. Uh, Sheets will do, is a terrific shortstop when she plays there. I mean, she's got really good range and got a really accurate arm. And then defensively, you've got Maggie Smith. She's one of the best defensive center fielders. And we've got a lot of good defensive center fielders in our area. Maggie Smith is one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, defense is going to be big because the ball's probably going to be put, put, put in play a lot when you face a team like Pioneer. And you've got, again, when you face Pioneer, you've got to throw the ball to the right base. Mm-hmm. If you do not throw the ball to the right base, they will take the extra base every time. Right. The, I mean, the two best base runners in our area both play on the same team. They're both at Pioneer. They're Kylie Ferris and Haley Kripe. They are both – the way they read the play ahead of them, are they're just fantastic at it. Mm-hmm. So you talk about Valley. Talk talk a little bit about the uh, softball at Valley. Boy, that was it. That score last night, that jumped out at me. To go into Winnemac and win 12-4. to four. Mm-hmm. And this team, I mean, they already had – that group of, I mean, we talk about the Valley Junior class of girls, and yeah, I mean, Corinna Stiles has just been scorching hot at the plate, and Molly Moriarty had three hits last night. I mean, we we've known about the we've known about the junior class for a while, and now the younger class is coming. And Braden Bainey, I mean, just tremendous again. Mm-hmm. I think I, th- I think she might even be playing a little bit of out center field this year, and then, but you look at that freshman class when you talk about McKaylee Costello. Just give them another big bat in that lineup, which I think they kind of needed. Mm-hmm. And then the other freshman that we don't talk about that much, Maddie Thompson. I mean, she's another good player. So now that that kind of beefs up their lineup even more. And boy, the other the the other kid that really impresses me. We talk about Caston's Maddie Smith. Well, Valley's Maddie Smith, the catcher. She's a big time bat as well. So now there's there, that lineup isn't. I don't want I, their lineup was never thin, but it's now it's gotten even tougher. Right. And I'm really curious to see how far Valley can go in the TRC. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it, it seems like, uh, you I know, think, as, you, think, as you think about the TRC, I mean, I think it's, why not, right? Right, it's pretty wide open. I yeah. mean, North Miami is certainly going to be good. You know, North Miami's got a really good freshman, too. Ashley Sumter Music. She had a home run against Caston the other day. She's a freshman. She's, hmm. from what we hear, she's really good. They've got another kid in Reese Hoover who's a really good player. Uh-huh. And, of course, we talk about Duncan, uh, we, uh, the Smith, Allie Smith. She's another good player for North Miami. North Miami could win it, but I don't think it's going to be in this runaway that I we maybe thought it was going to be. I think it's going to be a very competitive conference, uh, you know. And I think Valley will be right there in the mix. Uh, you know, obviously Whitco is a team that will always have to be respected as well. Right. And then Northfield, I'm sure, you know, even though they graduated a lot, they're probably going to be in that uh, mix somewhere uh, as well. Right. I mean, you, you lose Addie Baker and uh, Hunter in a graduation, and it's just those are just two gigantic pieces of the puzzle. Right. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, but uh, I'll see. How, yeah, Northfield plays Winnemac in a doubleheader on Saturday. That'll be interesting to see how they do. Yeah, where's that at this year? It's at Winnemac. It's at Winnemac yeah. this year. Winnemac swept a doubleheader from Northfield at Northfield last year. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it was interesting. You know, the way Northfield had a few struggles throughout the year, but boy, they got hot at the right time, didn't they? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, it should be should be fun there. A lot of uh, you know good things coming in in the softball field as well. Um, what else you want to talk about here? We've still got some time. I'd like to give a shout-out to Ava Stackhouse of Argus, freshman softball player, really good young player. Mm-hmm. Um, Carly Miller playing third base. doing. I mean, again, they've played some tough opponents so far this season. I think they'll get, they'll get better as the season goes on. I mean, uh, I think Coach Thayer is, is optimistic, mm-hmm. from, even, though they, even though they were from what – given who they've been playing. I, I, I always like talking to her, and I, I set some real optimism in that program and some – the talent level picking up. Kendra Burkholder is a young catcher. I, I really sense some optimism there. So while you're talking about Argus, I guess the one the one thing we haven't really talked about at Argus uh, yet is their their lacrosse. Uh-huh. Um, we're you know we haven't been able to get up there and cover any lacrosse yet. I was just looking. I know I had some on the schedule, but looks like it's a ways away yet. But um, I know I saw they they won one and then I saw they also lost one. So I don't know how how closely you've been yeah, following they, their lacrosse. Right. I, yeah, uh, I haven't been following too closely. I haven't heard from coach, but uh, yeah, I mean it's a, they've got good numbers. I think they have over twenty kids who came out mm-hmm. again, which is kind of similar to what they had last year. Yeah, and it, it's it's actually um, moved from a club sport at Argus now. Yeah. It's an actual uh, sport sport. Yeah. So you know that's. I think you're number mm-hmm. five now for yeah. Coach Humphrey and the yeah. Argus Cross. Yeah. Would be six, obviously, if they would have played in 20, I think. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's just one of those things. It's kind of an oddball that, that nobody else, that, that you know, really in the area has. And mm-hmm. I just wonder if, it, if it'll – will it take off? You know, will, will any of our other schools ever even think about lacrosse? I'm curious about that because one way you build the sport is by building rivalries. Mm-hmm. And who's Argus's rival in lacrosse? Mm-hmm. I mean, CMA, I guess. I don't know if they've ever played. CMA is just mm-hmm. on another level when it comes to yeah. that. But, uh, so, uh, but otherwise, I mean, they're playing like, you know, they're playing Leo mm-hmm. one week and Laporte the next. So it's – Elkhart, Lafayette. Right, yeah. so how, how do you build those geographical rivalries? Let's right. Let's do what I'm interested to see. Right. Um, we, we, can we give a shout-out? Um, we talked about he is our RTC Boys Basketball Player of the Year, J.J. Morris. Mm-hmm. He was the MVP of an AAU tournament in Indianapolis last week. Really? Okay. And that was a tournament that included the two Carroll kids, uh, Owen Duff and um, Jake Skinner. Yeah. I think they were on his team. Yeah. And, but J.J. Like, was the MVP. Of the tournament. Yeah. Wow. So I'm I'm curious to see uh, who JJ has gotten some calls or texts from lately. Uh, well, you you do something like that in a tournament, and, and uh, it's probably going to start happening if it hasn't. Are, when they see a six six kid do some of the things that he can on the court, I'm really right. I'm excited for JJ. What he's been playing, he's continued that into his AAU season, the great varsity season he had. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they've kept it kind of under wraps. We haven't really heard a whole lot about that part of his uh, his career, so it'd be interesting to see if you know if it does come out mm-hmm. and w- who he's been talking to. Yeah, we should mention Argus softball did win at Lavelle on Tuesday. Okay. They lost to Pioneer on Monday, but came back and won at Lavelle on Tuesday, nine to four. Great win for them. Right. So I wanted to mention that. 
Yeah, Laville has always been a uh, a big rival of of Argus softball, so that's a it's, it's always a good win when you can get that. Mm-hmm. Um, how about track? You you know we talked a little bit about the uh, Rochester track team. Uh, any other track teams that uh, you want to talk about around the area? Well, again, I, I'm very interested to see how those Valley Sprinters do. When you talk about uh, Wade Jones and Nathan Parker and Rex Kirkenstein and Caleb Petkin, they should have some. They've got a lot of depth in that boy sprinter area, and of course we talk all t- all the time about their field events. Right, Braden Shepard in the long jump, Wade Melanson in the, th- the discus and the shot put. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's, I think. And then is it Perkins that's the? And of the course, high Dawson, Dawson Perkins in the high jump yeah. is one of the top high jumpers in the state, and is going to IU East to jump. Yeah. Meanwhile, Valley's girls track team very young. Um, girls, you know, girls like Emma Patrick and Lydia Craig and Carly Snyder. They're all freshmen trying to. Find their roles. Ava Smith, uh, only a sophomore, and this is only her second year running track. So mm-hmm. one of the keys to their sprints, one of their their sprints. Uh, yeah, so it's it's just it's it's still really it's still really early for for track season. I mean, I think Rochester's gotten in like four, what three meets now or four meets, mm-hmm. and even that's kind of a lot. Right. But it's it just it's it's hard to know what to say about these times, just cause given the weather is just so weird and. Yeah, it's either been cold or uh, raining or or both. Yeah. Or snowing. Yeah. Uh, Winnemac, uh, their distance, you know, we saw their distance kids in cross country, and their, their dis- you know, distance will be a strength of their track team as well. I know there's a big invite up at Winnemac tomorrow. Going to be yeah. going to be over yeah. there, so they're going to have a doubleheader softball going on and uh, at the park and then over at the uh, school. Then they're going to have, a, I think there's like eight teams. Does that, mm-hmm. that sound right? Yeah, I thought it was six. Six. Yeah, yeah. Six or – I knew it was six or eight, so. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, should be a, a fun weekend with uh, you know a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. I wanted to give a shout out to, or I don't know if it's a shout out, but we should note North Davies boys basketball was just announced today. They are choosing to play in Class Three A yeah, the I next two years. They they won the Class One A state championship. They were moving up based on enrollment, so they knew they were going to be in Two A, but they have told the IHSA to move them up to Class Three A, and the IHSA has granted that wish. What what do you think's behind that? Is there somebody in two A that they want to avoid, or what what what's what's behind that? Well, that's interesting. Would they be in a, se- a sexual with Linton Stockton? I know Linton's they got a Division One player, the Hart kid, who uh-huh. I think is the son of the coach. I don't know. Uh, their coach, Coach Dalrymple, said something that he wants to he wants to be in a sectional at the Hatchet House. Okay. Which is what just about what ten fifteen minutes down the road from North Davies. Uh huh. Huh. But uh, again, they return. I think a lot of their kids that just won state. So, yeah. interesting decision. I mean, P- P- it's you've always been able to do it, but nobody's actually right. Nobody's done ever done it, it. Done it. So, for them to ask for that, that's going to be. Uh, I'll be curious to see how they do. Yeah, yeah. See how they do, and you know, if they if they can repeat their success and and, mm-hmm. and do it in three A, that's that's going to be saying something. Yeah, yeah. I'd also like to talk about an issue regarding um, uh, social media in, in high school sports. Uh, I was talking with a parent of a high school athlete, um, and we were kind of ca- talking back and forth and texting back and forth, and it was about kind of making that announcement of uh, uh, of a kid going to a, play a sport at the next level mm-hmm. and, and in college. And uh, I recommended that... Uh, Again, I, I have such a love-hate affair with Twitter. I mean, I people see my tweets, and I, I, it was funny. I was like, how many times have I tweeted in my life? And it was over 95,000. <laughs> well, it doesn't seem like 95,000, but at the same time. It sounds like a teenage girl. Yeah. I mean, that's at, a lot. But at the same time, you know, you're, you're watching the Masters, and Rory McIlroy, you know, chips in for the bunker, and it's kind of like my, my instinct to, like, reach for my phone and tweet something. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, did you see that? That was incredible. It's kind of like when, okay, I'm watching the Masters by myself in my room, but with social media it means I'm kind of watching it with others. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, but it's also kind of a, a love-hate affair because you're kind of wondering, well, what are people saying about my tweet about this? Mm-hmm. And you, it shouldn't matter. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it does, and it's just kind of – but, I, you know, I, I was thinking about – you know the way Ashlyn Brooke handled her college selection. That's really the the model way you should do it. Mm-hmm. Um, where she kind of because I think we were all wondering where is Ashlyn going to go to college. In a lot of ways, we've been wondering for years where Ashlyn's going to come. And the way she just kind of went out and said it, and she controlled the the timeline mm-hmm. of okay, I'm going to do it now, and here's what I'm going to say, and that kind of answered all the questions. Mm-hmm. And 
So I would kind of recommend that for kid for a kid, if you're thinking about you know playing a sport in college, you can you can control the message because I think there's a concern by some parents that either people like me in the media will break the news, or sometimes you'll want somebody like me in the media to break the news, mm-hmm. or sometimes you'll want your kid, but some, a way to to or some some parents are worried that. The club, the club coach or the travel coach will make the announcement, mm-hmm. and, and sometimes you don't want that because you want to control when the message gets out. Right. So one way you can get around that is have your kid get a social media account, and if you post it on Facebook and Twitter, and geez, now it's they include all these graphics and right, <laughs> uh, you know, picture of. So then you can use that to say, hey, I'm going to play this sport at this school. Right. And then you can kind of end all the drama and all the questions, right? But that's that's what makes social media. Again, there 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 are bad things about social media, but there are good things about social media. And one thing to do is kind of get out the word, and you control the message. Not your club coach, not your travel coach, not your AAU coach, not your high school coach. You control the message. Yep. So I would recommend that if kids are to kids and to parents, if you're thinking about playing a sport in college. That's that's an area for social media. And if you don't have social media accounts and you don't like using it, I can help out in my way. But again, as as a news, as a journalist, it's not ideal that I just sit on some information and just keep it to myself because you don't want it to get out. Yeah. Uh, you know. When, so don't don't tell Val until you're ready. Right. When, right. When the guy at ESPN found out that Tom Brady was retiring, I mean, he reported why. Or when Andrew Luck was retiring, he doesn't, he can't say, well, okay, I'll, whenever you're ready to go, then I'll tweet it out. No, I mean, he, it's his job to say as soon as he knows. Right. right. So, and and it's in a lot of ways, it's not much different than than in high school sports. But again, social media is one way you can control the message. With one tweet or one Facebook post, you can answer a lot of questions right. and kind of with the way. Again, I thought Ashlyn handled it perfectectly. Right when she made her decision to go to Ball State, it was like, okay, there and, it is, and, and and you're seeing college kids do it. You know, I'm entering my name in the NBA draft, and I like to thank all the people who supported me along the way. Mm-hmm. You know, that sort of thing. Or I'm, or I'm going back to college, and I'm, yeah, you know, yeah. So or I'm transferring. Yeah, or I'm tra- or I'm entered the transfer yeah, portal. So right. uh, social media is a way uh, you can use. Uh, is a way you can get your message out to a lot of people in with kind of essentially one click of a send button. Right. But, again, I, for teenagers, I would say be careful how you use it. Mm-hmm. Be careful how you use it. Again, for people in the media, I mean, we're kind of checking it all the time. But Well, and that's another thing, too. You say be careful how you use it because if you are an athlete that wants to play at that next level, they're going to scrutinize everything that you've posted on everything. And if you have a post that – a college coach doesn't like, they're just going to move on. Yeah. You know, they're going to they're going to look to the next person. And right. So they definitely, if you're interested in in doing that, uh, you know, sport at an, at another level, then be careful. Yeah, be careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, be careful. I get to look at Ashley Brooke and see how she did it is how you should do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've yeah, you but know. always yeah always always say less than yeah. <laughs> Always say a little bit less. That's I think yeah. one thing I've learned, especially now that now that not only do I tweet a lot, but now I, I talk for a living, right? Which is something I never had to think about before until about a year and a half ago. Right, right. I, yeah, I say that to my my kids all the time. You know, just you know, do you really need to post that? You know, do they need to know that? Do they need to know that? You know, just be smart about it, and because mm-hmm. you'll look back in twenty years and say, why did I put all that out there? Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, um, anything else? We're gonna Trevor Brown is the new will be the new boys soccer coach at Tippecanoe Valley. Okay. That uh, their board meeting is Monday, so that should become official at that time. Okay. Trevor had a very uh, excellent coaching career at Rochester. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see taking over a uh, program that's, you know, getting better every year, mm-hmm. but uh, still, you know, like, what six seven years now? I mean, it's not a real real old program. Yeah. So right. Right. They're still, you know, they're still working on getting that tradition built. Yeah, we're yeah, and again, uh, it's a tough, t- tough two A section with Fort Wayne Canterbury. Yeah, right, we we saw that uh, Fort Wayne Canterbury hand. and Fort Wayne Concordia yeah. and Culver Academy. Right, 
But, I mean, Trevor, he's had a history of success. He's won a couple of sectionals in the past. Yeah. So we'll uh, look out there as the uh, the boys are getting ready here on a uh, slightly windy but not, not <laughs> anywhere near the uh, level of wind that we had last night here at uh, Bob Copeland Field. And Culver Academy uh, Eagles are going to be coming to town to take on the Rochester Zebras. Rochester looking to remain uh, perfect on the season. Uh, who'd you say we're going with on uh, starting pitcher for the Zebras? It'll be Evan Elliott on the mound Evan, tonight. Evan and Elliott going to get the start. Okay. He'll be hitting third and uh, pitching. and Yeah, this will be the fir Evan's first mound performance of the year. Yeah. So somebody's going to get their first loss of the season here tonight because the Eagles coming in. I don't How many games have they played? Two. So they're 2-0 and oh yeah. and, and Rochester's 3-0? Uh, and oh? Yep. Uh, that's the other thing, too, you know, Boy, we're we're April fifteenth, and and both teams <laughs> five games in between them. Yeah, they, yeah, you know they should both probably have seven under their belt. You know, yeah. at this point, and yeah. they just you know the weather just hasn't cooperated. Mm -hmm. So, so we will be back here in uh, in a few minutes. Uh, well, not a few minutes. Uh, about a quarter till five, we'll be uh, getting ready to go with a little pregame for you here from Bob Copeland Field. We'll talk some more about the. Uh, game between the Zebras and the uh, Culver Academy Eagles. Uh, and we'll get a camera set up over at Fansler and, and get uh, get that ready so we can catch the uh, Rochester Zebras softball team against the Culver Community Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. So, all right, anything else before we go? Whew. Last chance. <laughs> I think <laughs> my, my brain is drained. All I right. That's all I can think of. Oh, uh, Culver hired Austin Faust to be their new offensive coordinator. For the football. Yep. yep. Of course, Mike Zaner used to be coach at Rochester. He was the defensive coordinator and the head coach. And, of course, Austin Faust was one of his players back yeah. in the day. Austin's a 2010 Rochester grad, So I, former I, head coach at uh, John Glenn. So I'm wondering, as they named him uh, offensive coordinator, do you think we'll see something different from from Culver? Or we've been uh, kind of watching that, uh, you know, power uh, the running power game in a uh, phone booth kind of thing. And do you think we'll shake that up a little? I don't know. I'll uh, have to ask. Yeah, uh, that'll be curious uh, to see if they if they do or if it's kind mm -hmm. of uh, more of the same. But yeah, got a got a good group coming back there mm -hmm. that are going to be seniors this yeah. year, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. Also, I've uh, I've emailed Todd Vanderweel, and we're looking into it. But I think Argus Estate is going back down to one A for boys soccer from the way that. The IHSA was a little confusing with their press release, but we think Argus is going back. Had Argus won that 2A sectional, they would have stayed in 2A, but since they didn't, I think we believe they're going back down to 1A. Okay. It was just a one just a one year bump up due to the success factor. Okay. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here for Talking Sports with Val. We'll be back here about 445 with the uh, pregame for the Rochester Zebras and the Culver Eagles here from Bob Copeland Field.